Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and thank you to the 5,000 plus people that are still subscribed to this channel. Every one of you, I really appreciate you. Okay, so I've had the Mac Studio for a couple of weeks now and I've been using it as my primary editing machine since I got it. So I've got some thoughts and I wanted to put them here. I've also done a huge range of tests in Premiere Pro and compared this to the upgraded M1 Max chip in my MacBook Pro. I've tried to follow a whole workflow from copying SD cards over to writing to an SSD, scrubbing in the timeline, playback of 10-bit 422, a few real world, uh, a few real world projects and lots more that we have to cover. So let's get into it. Okay, so normally I leave problems till the end, but here's some of the issues and caveats I've found when using the Mac Studio. And bear in mind that some of these don't necessarily relate to just this machine or the M1 chip itself. First up is the SD card slot. Sometimes, or most of the time, it's quick and efficient, and I love having it there. Other times, it just doesn't work. You go to copy something over from an SD card and it will either hang at 0%, or it will just do the first half really quickly, hang for 10 minutes, and sometimes resume a bit later, or sometimes it just fail completely. This is the same problem I'm having with my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max, so maybe it's something to do with the OS, or maybe they're using the same hardware, and maybe that's the problem. Either way, I highly recommend having a backup card reader to hand because this can be a problem. On to universal control now, and the fact I can easily move my mouse and keyboard between the Mac Studio and a MacBook Pro screen is overkill definitely, but it's been awesome for doing these tests. But the thing is, once I move the mouse from one Mac to another, the scrolling on the mouse actually stops working. This could be a limit to the MX Master mouse because it's not Apple made, but it's worth bringing it up anyway. The next problem applies to 10-bit 422 footage from Sony cameras on Premiere Pro of 2021. If you're editing the latest version of Premiere, then fine, but on Premiere Pro 2021, you won't be able to edit 10-bit 422 footage as it plays back and actually exports with these weird artifacts on them. So if you're filming in 10-bit 422, you need the latest version of Premiere Pro. Other than these really quite small things, the Mac Studio and the operating system has been, been flawless to use. So let's dive into the tests. So the first thing you do when you get back is copy over the footage from your SD card. So I did some tests on copying over footage and I copied over 113 gigabytes of footage from a V60 SD card to the internal drive of the Mac Studio. And that took seven minutes and 58 seconds. The MacBook 16 inch failed to do anything for eight minutes because of the issues I mentioned earlier and then took seven minutes and 12 seconds. So very similar results once it kicked in. Next, I checked the read and write speeds on the ports with the M1 Max Max Studio. You get four Thunderbolt ports at the back and two USB-C ports at the front. Obviously, if you're doing any kind of editing work, then you wanna be plugging into the Thunderbolt ports where possible. And here's the numbers that show that. So on the Blackmagic disk speed test, my SanDisk Extreme Pro external SSD plugged into the Mac Studio's front USB-C ports, got a write speed of 520 and a read speed of 690. If you plug that same SSD into the Thunderbolt ports, I got a write speed of 830 and a 921 read speed. Still on the MacBook Pro, that write speed was 903, which suggests slightly quicker write speeds on the laptop. Now to copy footage from an external SSD to the internal SSD, the picture was pretty similar. The Mac Studio copied over 96 gigabytes of footage from the SanDisk to the internal drive in one minute and 51 seconds. And the MacBook did this in one minute and 39 seconds. I'm guessing because of the faster internal SSD on the MacBook. And you can see that internal SSD test I did on both the Mac Studio and the MacBook Pro in the, my last video, which I will link in the description down below. Now let's get into a real world project and firstly, a relatively basic wedding project. This footage is all 10 bit 420 and we have a couple of adjustment layers here too. From the external SSD, playback on the Mac Studio at full quality is great and scrubbing is excellent too. It's more than usable up until about three times speed where it starts to stutter. From the internal SSD, not much changes, but the scrubbing is slightly quicker. So let's get to playback from a slightly more complex project now. And I've been given permission to show some clips from that project from the last video, um, which I said I couldn't show off. Again, that video is linked down below in the description if you wanna see some more on that. By complex, I just mean there's a lots of links back to After Effects, text tracking, multiple layers, and animation going on. And by the way, if you appreciate the time it took to do all of these tests, then do hit that subscribe button. I've got lots of videos coming soon on more tech and filmmaking on the go. So on the Mac Studio base model, 
We could play these titles through Dynamic Link in full quality and on normal speed. But when it came to playing back this effect, where well, we've tracked an image to the screen here, it got a bit stuttery. When I played it back at half quality, it looked better, and at quarter quality, we could easily play that back. So if you're doing more advanced After Effects work, then you might have to stop down that quality a little bit, at least on the base level Mac Studio. But on the MacBook Pro, the story was more or less the same, and I couldn't actually notice any real difference in the quality of the playback. The strange thing about Premiere Pro though, is sometimes when things aren't rendered out, something will play back perfectly one time, then you'll go back and play it again, and it will stutter, depending on what mood Premiere Pro is in. In general though, even though the 16 inch MacBook Pro has the upgraded M1 Max chip, I didn't notice any real difference uh, in playing back these projects. Scrubbing in this project was completely fine on both devices too, so no problems there. And this is pretty much the same throughout. Scrubbing on both of these Macs is excellent. Just for curiosity then, I decided to see how many layers of 4K 10-bit 422 I could play on the Mac Studio. And it managed a whopping 18 layers of 10-bit 422 4K footage with an adjustment layer before I got bored. It wasn't buttery smooth here, but it didn't hang up, which is the main thing. I then added some essential graphics to test it a bit more and played one layer of footage with the essential graphic in full quality, but that did stutter a bit. But if you change the quality to half, you can get around eight layers of 4K with a graphic on top and you're not really pushing it. This was more or less the same with the MacBook Pro, but it did play that one layer up with the essential graphic in full quality. So it has a tiny bit extra power there. Again, both devices kept up with scrubbing pretty much flawlessly. Something else I ended up doing quite a lot in Premiere Pro is stabilization with Warp Stabilizer. So I stabilized this 10 second 4K 10 bit 420 50 frames per second clip with Warp Stabilizer on the Mac Studio and it did it in 49 seconds. And the MacBook with the upgraded chip did it in 42 seconds. Finally, we get around to exporting the project. We have a few projects here to talk about. The first one is a pretty standard wedding project with a few layers of video, some split screen effects, and a couple of adjustment layers. These video layers are 10 bit 420. You'll see I did this test in the last video, but I had the SSD plugged into the USB port of the Mac Studio, which to be honest was a rookie error. From the USB C port, the Mac Studio exported this video in 5 minutes and 19 seconds. But when we moved over to the Thunderbolt port, we get a better time of 4 minutes and 58 seconds. For reference, the speed of the MacBook Pro did it in is four minutes and 54 seconds. So really close on a project with not too many effects. Next, we have the complex project to export and the Mac Studio exported this in six minutes, 45 seconds from the USB-C ports and five minutes and 36 seconds from the Thunderbolt port. For reference, the MacBook did it in five minutes and 56 seconds from the external hard drive, which is actually slower than the Mac Studio. I honestly don't know why this is. The Studio shouldn't be quicker than the MacBook, but I have to say what I see. So after all those tests and after using the Mac Studio for the past week, here's my thoughts on if you should get this for video editing on Premiere Pro and After Effects. I've been editing on this MacBook Pro for a few months now and switching over to this base level Mac Studio, I didn't actually notice a hell of a lot of difference in the actual performance of the editing. Obviously it's true in the numbers of slightly faster exporting times, stabilization times, etc. But scrubbing playback and export times for smaller projects are more or less the same. I did find I really benefited from having the USB-A ports on the back of the studio, and I'm also just impressed on how quiet it is too. I think if you're doing projects like wedding films or YouTube, where there's not too many crazy effects, transitions, titles, and after effects compositions, then you'd be more than happy with a base level Mac Studio. It cuts through all this footage like butter. But if you're consistently doing GPU heavy tasks on after effects like motion tracking, working with multiple layers, additional effects, then you're probably gonna notice more of a difference if you go with the 32 core GPU on the M1 Max or even the M1 Ultra. So that's it from me. I hope this video has helped you make a decision on whether you should pay more to upgrade. If you've got any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. If this video has been helpful at all, hit that thumbs up button. And if you wanna see more videos like this on tech and filmmaking on the go, then do hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.